Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. College football preview for week number 11. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ooh, play that sweet jam. That's so good. So good. I am fired up. Chris is fired up. This is the week that we don't like each other, and that's okay. So I think I think we still kind of like each other. It's all right. We still in here doing the show. We like each other every other week. We. (laughs) I love it. I'm just teasing. Of course. I love Gary. You can find more information about us if this is your first time. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. Over there. Follow us on uh, Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Click the like button. Leave some comments below. Tell us what you like, what you don't like this week. Uh, we got some big-time matchups. Big, 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 big-time matchups. Two undefeated teams? This still, four, 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 four undefeated, undefeated teams. Four undefeated teams playing each other this late in the season. I can't wait. This is going to be so good. So good. Uh, the show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. If you are wanting to watch these big-time matchups... Look, it's morning matchup and an afternoon matchup. You don't even have to hang out at Tunica all night. You can just go down in the morning, hang out, spend the day down there. Do home your by thing. dinner. You can be home by dinner. Just saying. Go down there, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. We could not endorse all of them enough. They're all fantastic. Go check them out for yourself. Find more information over at tunicatravel.com. They got great stuff always in the works. Go find out the awesome concerts, awesome golf courses, awesome steakhouses. Man, they got good stuff down there. Go check it out. Tunicatravel.com. Let's let's go ahead and fire in here. Um, I don't want to keep the people too long. LSU at Alabama. Alabama is six-point favorite as of right now. It's 2.30 p.m. on CBS in Bryant-Denny Stadium, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The president of the United States of America is going to be at the game, which means I'm going to be at the game, and it's going to take me eight hours to get into that stadium. It's just ridiculous. Yes, sir. Just ridiculous. He, and getting out probably won't be fun. Probably not going to be fun either. I, I mean, unless he doesn't stay for the whole ball game. Oh, no, that's what you need. You need this to be a first I, quarter. First away. half. Yeah, well, no, I bet he's going about 20 minutes. Probably. I don't know. He stayed for the entire uh, UFC fight. Stayed so for the whole thing. We'll see, but either way, that that's obviously that's not gonna that didn't last four hours. No, uh, but that, that does mean it's a big event, right? Obviously, this is a massive, massive football game. It is uh, this year's game of the century, which we have about one a season now. So game of the century. So that's every hundred years, but we have one every year. We have one every year now. Got it. That's uh, remember the first one. The game of the century was that really 2011. Did. That was like the the game in the last hundred years, yes. Yeah. But now... Now we have them all the time. I mean, they, they, everybody talked about it being the game of the century last year, but and this, it was number one versus number three. Now it's number two versus number three. This one and that one are more alike than any of the ones between each other because LSU just wasn't the same team. I agree. We, we, we understand that, right? No, no, no. We absolutely, we absolutely we agree there. We were identical teams in 2011. Yeah. We are identical teams right now almost. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with that. We're virtually identical we had a great kicker here. Yes. Here, we are identical. Yes. We are not identical. not a great kicker. Uh, fantastic yeah. wide receivers. Fantastic quarterback. Yeah. Uh, probably often, probably the best wide receiving core in the the best wide receiving core on one side. Probably the second best on the other. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. This is close. Yeah, it's really really you're, close. Your running backs are, I'm gonna bet, a higher pedigree. I would wager that as well. Yes, uh, there are. At, at, now I will say this: the, the line, are five nine. The line is a little bit too high. No, our, th- our, our running back is not. Uh, no, no, no. We're good. No, you're right. I'm you're happy right. on that. Uh, Alabama minus six seems like a crazy number. I think that's insane. It opened at seven, and was bet down, but it wasn't bet down as much as I thought it would be. There's been more Alabama money than I assumed, and I'm not sure if that is sharps coming in after it got down under a touchdown. Or if that is just public perception of yeah, Alabama's at home, of course they're going to win. And They've they, won and eight they beat, straight, and they beat LSU all the time. Yeah, so this is always built up as a big game, and it never is. Right. 
Uh, LSU is going to be without edge rusher Michael Divinity. How much does that really matter, though? You know, it, 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 they make it out it, like it's a huge thing. It it, it matters, man. It, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. Because it matters. our pressure isn't great anyway. He is. He he led the team in sacks, but he only had three on the year. That's because it, our pressure because isn't Because you're not able to get pressure. Yeah, that's a, that's a big problem. So it matters. It matters a lot more than you think. Alabama can win this football game. It almost feels like Alabama's the underdog. But they're six point. But they're six point favorites, right? Like the the national perception is. I think the Gary perception is. Maybe the maybe my perception is that they are the underdog. Because I this believe game. that the national perception is not that. Alabama can win this football game, whether Tua is healthy or not. Okay, now I will disagree on that. I I will tell you why. You think Matt Moore starts a quarterback? Y'all win this game. Mac Jones. Whatever the hell his name is, Mac, whoever it is, I think I think they still have a shot. To a tongue of Iowa. LSU's defensive line is not as good as they have been in the past, right? Okay, so I agree with that. By the way, yes, Alabama's that is a true statement. Alabama's running game has significantly improved over the last month. The reason for that, yeah, run when that center got hurt, okay. it, <laughs> when the center got hurt, and they bring in, they've got Dante Brown. They've got Landon Dickerson. Those guys are nasty up front. They love pushing people around. Alabama started the year averaging less than four yards per carry rushing the football through about four games, five games, and went back, made sure that they put an emphasis on that running game. For the season, they are now averaging more than five yards per carry. Najee Harris, uh, all all of those guys. They are fantastic. Brian Robinson Jr. They're going to be able to run the football some in this ballgame. LSU, their biggest weakness, though, on defense is giving up passes across the middle. They're, they've got a fantastic secondary when you're in one-on-one coverage. But those slants for Alabama are what kills everybody, right? Yeah. Now, LSU's got speed in the secondary, obviously, but the linebackers... Not great in coverage. The the safeties, not really great in coverage. Grant Delpit, yeah. Uh, he's also coming off of an injury, but it's whatever. It was a, a rolled ankle. Yeah. Nothing major, at least we don't think. For a guy but, who uses his ankle. Yeah. Yeah. More, more than the quarterback. It, it's not his plant foot, so that's good. So, either way, either way. Chance for Alabama to win this game. The issue with LSU... LSU, not a super efficient rushing attack, right? Like, they they bust out some big games, or big gains, but as far as every play, they're not getting five yards every play, right? Well, they don't run the ball every play. But they don't run the ball. Alabama the has the... running game is the short pass. These, these teams are nearly identical. Alabama not great at covering the middle of the field. You put them in one-on-one coverage, and they're going to be fine. LSU's not going to put them in one on one. We're going to run slants just like you. just like Alabama. That's a, that's our running game. That's it, it. What you need is somebody to make a mistake, right? Correct. If Alabama is going to win the game, it will be because of this one thing. Joe Burrow has not had to face pressure the way that he will in this ball game. It is not the defensive line that you got to worry about. It is the edge rushers with Anthony Jennings and Terrell Lewis. Those two guys are faster and better than anybody that LSU has played so far this season coming off the edge. Nobody from Texas, nobody from Florida, because both of Florida's edge rushers were out for that ball game. Correct. Auburn's edge rushers are their defensive linemen. That's right. Who both weigh 300 pounds. They're not as fast as Terrell Lewis or Anthony Jennings. You're going to get you're going to get a bunch of different looks and a different pressure coming from defense coordinator Pete Golding in this ball game. Will they be able to get home? Or will Joe Brady and Steve Ensminger be able to get those short, quick passes out enough? And I don't, that's why I didn't bet on the game, right? And so at my pick for the game, I'm obviously going to take Bama minus six because that is the team thing, to, the, the homer thing to do. I'm going to go ahead and write down that you're taking LSU to win the game and cover the six. Yes, sir. Um, Go ahead and, and talk to me about this. Like, I, I've, I've given you my side of it. 
What do you see? I mean, I think the game is pretty even. I want to know from you. I've got one question that we won't have an answer to, but I want to know what you think. What percentage do you think Tua will be? I think Tua will be 85%. 52. 52. That's what I think. You think 52%. Last year, he had the same operation. He had three weeks to get ready for it, and they thought he was about 70 Last year was much more severe. I mean, this guy was walking off the field. He didn't even have a limp when he walked off the field. They did the tightrope thing as a preventative thing. I'm wrong. Not to mention the videos from practice this week. Great. Guy looks great. Like I, I think, I think this is all a throws more picks like you threw in against Tennessee. I'll feel great. <laughs> Agreed. Just don't, Agreed. just don't look at the secondary. Don't look at the safety. It's fine. I, I don't think this is some gamesmanship by Saban. I think this is a Belichick kind of thing, where, I, no, I'm not going to tell you whether my guy is injured or not. Oh, we know he's injured. If he had surgery on his foot. All right, so. We've got the mic issue fixed. Now, come back in. Let's let's start this over from your side. Let's talk about what what do you see from the LSU side to make you believe in in them getting a win this weekend? I think this is the best team Alabama's played, and it's not close. I think yeah, you've beaten up on a bunch of people, but you've beaten up on a bunch of bad teams. You haven't I agree played with an that. offense anywhere close to this, and and not that LSU's defense is great. But I would venture to say that we're we're the best defense you've played so far too. Yeah, I could agree with that. So, I, I you know. So this is just a battle tested kind of thing. Yeah. LSU has played better teams. We've we've actually been in big games this year. Yeah. And you've cakewalked through games. That's a good point. And I and I think that matters. I just do. I could I could one hundred percent believe that. That's. A, I think e- there's going to be times where the game is tight, and and it is a stressful situation. And it's something that our guys, my guys, have been through a lot. And they are going to have cooler, calmer heads. And it's something that Alabama players haven't been through at all. That is a very valid point. And if Alabama gets down, how will they respond? Because at what point in time, you've never been there. I mean, it, so they've been behind at certain points, but it, it's so... You're right. You haven't been down in a pressure situation. They 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 hadn't been down you in the third the quarter. The first quarter to Ole Miss. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think that Alabama has dominated some of the teams that they've dominated because they got turnovers and a lot of defensive scores. Because that is other, a good point. Because uh, those other teams make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And LSU's not going to give you the ball. At, you might be right. Turnover margin, Alabama is number one in the country. LSU is number 14. There's not a massive difference there. Yeah. But not just not a massive difference. The teams you've played, one of the reasons you've the, – the fact that you were in the Ole Miss game in the first quarter and then how did you blow them out? Oh, you just kept taking the ball away and scoring and taking the ball away and scoring. If we don't give up the ball, then you're not going to be able to do that. And then yeah. I've I've been saying this all year. I steal it from Mike Lombardi. Give him full credit. Our defense isn't great. You're right. We're not the defense that we were in 2011, or we've been the last couple of years. The best way to the, the best defense that we can play is to not play defense. Yeah. And I think that's our strategy: short passes, slants across the middle, in the outs. Make this get tick 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 tick. Don't run out of bounds when you don't have to, and you let the clock tick. Shorten the game, and you keep the ball away from Tua. You uh, you bring up an interesting point here. I'm curious about time of possession. Oh, I bet our time of possession is bad. Well, I mean, remember how quickly Alabama scores? Because well, how quickly do we score? We've got like three play drives. Alabama number 44 in the country in time of possession. LSU number 84. Yeah, you're right. No, LSU, no, no, but we're bad. LSU number two in yards per play, Alabama number three, and they are off by one tenth yeah. of a of a point. What about uh, points per play? Points per play, uh, this doesn't have it on here. Passing yards per attempt. Um, da, 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 da. I bet points per play were close to number one. Points number per one. play. Well, team rankings will tell us that. Uh, because I know that Alabama's is not because they've put more emphasis on running the football and helping that time of possession. Yeah. Uh, I know that that it will not be quite the same. Let me ask you the other thing. 
Okay. Do you think? Do you think Nick, who has his entire life been a very conservative coach, don't make mistakes, don't turn the ball over, play safe, play within ourselves, just be better than the other hey, team? Points play. per play or points per play margin? Uh, what's the difference? I don't know. What points per play margin. I just learned what points per play was like four weeks ago. Let's let's just roll with uh, points per play is only offense. Okay, that's all I care about. Then. Alabama is number two. LSU is number five. No way. That's your, that's insane. But over the last three point six seven, uh, LSU's game against Auburn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. do it. That would so, do it. So because it, it like for the season point six oh one okay. points per play. Hundred percent. But Auburn against Auburn, point two five three. That's right. And so that's right. Oklahoma's yeah. above all the teams above us haven't yeah. played anybody close to that. I, I just I just think this is look LSU's. It's a different team this year. If you're if you're judging this game solely on what's happened the last eight years, you're wrong. That's you might get that's the not same the right outcome. way to look at this game. You might get the same outcome. You're you're still your your process is wrong. The, your well, the, process you is might get wrong. the same outcome because like there's only two possible outcomes. There's that's right. Alabama wins or LSU wins, but it will not be the same type of game. No, it will not go the way. Like, I will guarantee this. LSU's not getting beat twenty to nothing. Well, that, We're that's not, what I was going to say. Crossing fifty yard line. LSU has not scored on Alabama since what two thousand sixteen? Is that right? No, twenty sixteen was ten to nothing. Last year was twenty nine to nothing. Anyway, let's move on. I don't remember what the. Let's just move on. We've talked about this forever. I know. I'm we just haven't a... really said anything, Gary. Well, I've said. I feel like I said quite a bit. Uh, I was twenty four to ten, two thousand seventeen. A long way away to say the teams are exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. Alabama's got a better run game. I I agree with that. I said that. So, uh, so I'm I'm rolling Alabama. You're rolling LSU. I I think our offensive coordinator is better. I think we're going to be more creative. I think you're going to be more conservative. I I can believe that. I think your head coach is going to say, "Don't make mistakes. Don't give them the ball." And I think our head coach says, "Let a rip tater chip." Yeah, I could see it. I could 100% see it. All right, let's uh, let's move into the next big game, and we'll kind of roll through these. Uh, won't spend as long, obviously, on that one. Uh, but this is LSU Alabama week. This is our week. This is what we do. Next up, Penn State minus seven at Minnesota. 11 a.m. game on ABC at TCF Bank Stadium. They like to have games during the day at Minnesota because it gets so freaking cold at night. I think if I was Minnesota, I'd want it at night. They wanted it during the day. I'd want it to be cold. I'd want it to be nasty. You're used to it. You should be. And you would think Penn State would be too, right? No, but not the same. I don't think it's the same. Like not Minnesota same. cold is a different kind of cold. That's a different kind of cold, man. So, uh, Minnesota has been dominant lately against not very good teams. Penn State has been beating some pretty good teams. They uh they won on the road at Iowa, they uh they beat Michigan, yes, sir. they hammered Michigan State on the road, like they, Penn State's good, Penn State's just a good football team. Agree. Do you see, it, what what would be the way that Minnesota would win this football game? I don't think that they can throw the ball very well. I was about to say run the football, control but, the line of, line of scrimmage. That's that's control the, the clock. Yeah. But uh, you feel like Penn State would be able to do that better, right? No, because Penn State's offense is explosive. They're three and out, or they're an 80-yard touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, you got a valid point. I mean, they're, Penn State's time of possession is not great. No. Not great at all. Because because they, they, they either score quickly or they punt. But they're not an LSU where they score all the time. They score four times a game. Yeah. They're going to put up 28 points, unless you're Maryland. Maryland sucks. <laughs> That's a good point. This is not Maryland that they will be playing. This is going to be a fantastic football game, I think. I think it's going to be a good game. I don't think there's going to be a blowout in any way. I think, I think Penn State could still win by double digits, and it would still be considered uh, a moral victory of sorts for Minnesota. I'm going to have some money on Minnesota's money line. And in our picks, I'm going to take Minnesota in this one. Okay. That's, I'm taking Penn State minus the seven, but you're uh, you're rolling Minnesota plus the seven I'm here. Probably gonna have Penn State win the game. Okay. I, that is, I'm gonna have money on the line. 
That I can understand. Like you put them in the round robin, right? I I can understand it. I can understand it. All right, next game up. Iowa at Wisconsin. Now, a third matchup of ranked teams. This is uh this is interesting. Wisconsin favored by nine and a half here. Iowa has looked pretty good this year. Yes. Thus far. Uh they have not been beaten by more than nine and a half in any game. Nope. They're six and two right now. Kirk Ferentz does what he always does. They lose those those massive uh tight ends last year in the first round of the NFL draft. But they got Nate Stanley back. No, Nate Stanley's not fantastic by any stretch of the imagination, but he is a senior quarterback. In the Big Ten, he has been through these games. He understands what is coming for him. I just, I think that everything that Iowa does, Wisconsin does better. I completely and I, agree with that. I feel like after getting their rear ends whipped against Ohio State, Wisconsin wants to come out and prove something here. But nine and a half seems crazy to me. I thought it was high. I still took it. It's 3 p.m. on Fox and Camp Randall, by the way, in Madison, Wisconsin. I I wrote down Wisconsin minus 9.5. I think I like that because the line looked a little wonky. And I think there's probably a reason for that. So I'm I'm rolling Wisconsin minus 9.5 here. I don't think Iowa can score very well. I don't they think they... They haven't scored on anybody, and I think this might be the best defense they've played. I mean, they only put three points up on Michigan. And... That was on the road. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm rolling Wisconsin here. I think they are out to prove a point, and they will do it at Iowa's expense. Let's move on to the other team in the state of Iowa. Iowa State going to Oklahoma. This line opened at 15. It got bet all the way down to 13. It's back up to 14 and a half again. All of this from Sunday afternoon until Tuesday night when we record this. It's a 7 p.m. game on Fox. It's a night game in Norman. I I like Iowa State here. I think Oklahoma's going to win the game, but I think Iowa State can score, man. I think Matt Campbell gets creative enough, and yeah. and the defense can make enough stops. I mean, they do this against Oklahoma every year. Yeah. Like, this is the, the game that they circled. Matt Campbell went into the league, picked out the big bully, said, that's the one that we're going to focus on every that's year. Right. And, we beat them. We've made something of ourselves. Yeah, and and they really focus on it. The last time they went to Norman, they got that dub. Yeah. Now, last year, they only lost by a touchdown at home. But I think Campbell can match up well against Lincoln Riley. I do, too. I do, too. They're going to be in my parlay, my, 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 my money line ro- round robin. Yeah. That's, I, I, so, I'm going to guess you're taking Iowa State plus the 14 and a half. Yes, definitely taking the 14. Taking OU to win. I'm doing the. Yeah, I'm doing the same. I mean, thing. we don't get any credit for for taking a dog, so yeah. why not? I mean, it's it's all just one why number. Don't I take a plus four fifty dog. I don't get anything for it. No, that's a that's a very valid point. Very valid point. All right, last of the big games before we run into our, uh, before we run into our interesting matchups for rapid fire, Kansas State at Texas. I mean, we're we're going to Austin, Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium. It's a two thirty p.m. game on ESPN. Everybody else will be focusing on LSU, Alabama. This will be the least watched game on TV. Texas is a seven point favorite, and Kansas State has been rolling, folks. Lately, they get the big win against Oklahoma State. They're six and two. They are ranked at number sixteen in the college football playoff rankings. Texas gets that loss at TCU. Do they bounce back? I don't think they can stop the run. And that's what Kansas State does. Yeah. I like Kansas State. I like I like Kansas State. Kind of kind of good here. I'm gonna take Kansas State's points. I'm gonna take Kansas State to win the game. I'm taking Kansas State plus the seven. I'm taking Texas to win, but I don't know why. Like I wrote that down as a pick and I just like I like Sam Ellinger. I think that he I do like Sam. I, I think he's a hell of a football player. That defense can't stop anybody. You want to talk about a time of possession game? I mean, they gave up. When, when this game is over, go look at the time of possession. Yeah, Kansas State will have the ball for forty minutes. You know, I'm about to say it's going to get nasty. Yeah, it's going to be forty minutes. That's so that's so crazy to me. Texas can't stop anyone. 
It's, at it, all. This this line went up. I mean, it was five and a half, and there's more money coming in on Texas. And I just I dummies. I don't understand dummies. Like I it, trust me, I want Tom Herman to win. Like I, I think worse. I think college football is better when you have more of the when you have USC in Texas and Michigan and Notre Dame and you know whatever when when all of these teams are good it's better i like chaos i like the little guys well i mean Kansas state is definitely providing that we we could not have been more wrong oh no about this team no i thought and they I had say no it every talent. Week. i like climbing i thought climbing was a hell of a coach i think the same thing with louisville i didn't think they had any talent did did Kansas State quit? Like, did the players quit on that, Bill Snyder? That see, I just have a hard time saying they quit. Or did he? Quit, did, was he just not able to get the most out of thing? Man, I've worked for people that were awful pieces of crap, and they were horrible work environments. But I still went to work every day because there was other people around me that depended on me doing my job. When we talk about teams quitting, I I find that really, really, really hard pill to swallow. It's the reason. Go to the gambling picks later. We'll get into this. But but I didn't give this point here. It's the reason that when I see Florida State quit, I woke up Monday morning and said, I don't know who they're playing. I don't know what the line is. I'm going to bet against Florida State today, this week, because that team quit. It, they, didn't, they didn't quit on one guy, okay? They, they quit on everybody. Yeah. If you quit, you quit on everybody. You quit on your position coach. Quit on your coordinator. You quit on the guys next to you. That's a good point. And I don't think that a new head coach changes that. I think if you're a quitter, you're a quitter. I, that's what makes it really hard for me to think these kids just quit. I, I think they have more talent than we, we gave them credit for. I also think they've probably got some some senior, some older, more mature people there. I, I like veteran teams, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know that for a fact, but I, I just have to – I just have to imagine you got more juniors and seniors on this team. I could, I could buy that. I, and Carmen's I see where he's a hell from. of a football coach. Yeah, he is. He he's got everybody rallying right now. That is a, that's a fantastic football team. I like him to win the game. That's a, you might be right. I'm gonna take Texas to Texas win. Texas is reeling, man. I could see Texas losing. You know, two of the last three football games. I mean, they do have to play Baylor. They got to play Kansas State. They got to go they, at Baylor. They got to play Kansas State. They at still home, got Iowa State. And they got Iowa State. I mean, they they don't have a tough. I mean, an easy run. No, they definitely do not. Would you definitely. be shocked if, if before the season started, if I told you they lose two of these three games? Forget about what you what they've done in the past. Yeah, I think I would have. I wouldn't have shocked me at all. Well, Kansas State, it would have. But Baylor and Iowa State, I thought were going to compete. Yeah, I thought there was a chance they lose those games. So the fact that, but I, I just, I don't know. If you thrown Kansas State in there, I, I think oh, no, I would have no. really been in the beginning of the season. I would have never considered that. If if you had told me that that Texas was going to go eight and four, I would have said, okay, that makes sense. If they lose two of the next three, they will go seven and five. I have a substantial, substantial season long running. If they win these three games, I'm going to be so pissed off. What uh? What do you have under nine and a half? Under nine. Under, under nine. nine. Under nine. Okay, yeah, so it might you, be nine and a half. I hadn't looked at it since I bought it before the season started, but but I know that I need them. I need them to get to eight. And I remember when I picked that before the season started, I had Texas people making it abundantly clear there's a better chance that we go undefeated and win the national championship than lose four games. That's that don't sound real smart now. Well, you you agreed with them back then. I really I I thought that they had upgraded the talent a lot. And, and I did all that knowing I really like Sam Ellinger. I will tell you this. I did not count on basically their entire defense being oh, okay. hurt. All right. So that does hurt things. Sure. Uh, I didn't see them losing the TCU game. I didn't count I didn't... on that defense being worth a damn. Well, so. Uh, cheers to you. Cheers to you. You got that. I didn't get it yet. They uh, can win these three games and piss me off. Me I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, it, it, you if they if they lose one more game, that's four losses. You're you're golden. Well, yeah, if they, if they lose one more, and they, they got Kansas got State, left. Baylor, and Iowa State left, I think you're gonna be fine. Okay, I think you're gonna be fine. I hope so. I'm getting I'm getting a teensy bit nervous. Gary Patterson won the Heisman. Yeah, it, it helped you out. 
Let's talk about Gary Patterson. Let's go on and move into the uh, interesting games rapid fire. Game one, Baylor at TCU. This is a short line, man. Baylor minus two. I think it opened at Baylor like minus one, right? I don't know what it opened at. I know it's minus two now. It's Tuesday when we're doing this. And, uh, man, yeah, I, I I like Baylor. It's so weird. Baylor, uh, TCU just turns the football over still. They're just still that team that they were last year. And that shocks me. Yeah. You know yeah. why they were able to beat Texas? Because Texas can't take the ball away from anybody. Yeah. But Defense. everybody else takes the ball away from TCU. You're right about that. That's why they struggle to win games. I will tell you this. Uh, so the sports book where the online or offshore sports book offshore where sports all of the sharps bet is at Pinnacle. And Pinnacle has already moved it up to Baylor minus two and a half. So the sharps are on Baylor right now. Um, I mean, I, would it surprise you to see TCU win this game? No, because a, it, the only reason it wouldn't is, A, Gary Patterson, still one of the best coaches in all of college football. And two, all good – outside of your juggernauts who just are blue bloods galore, nobody goes undefeated in the college football game. And Baylor does have Oklahoma coming in next Everybody week. gets got at some point. Yeah. So would, would it shock me? Absolutely not. I could see them losing this game in a look-ahead spot and, and then beating Oklahoma I don't next think week. it'll be because they looked ahead. I just think they just got got. It's entirely possible. I mean, it, it, look, Gary Patterson's a good coach. He's a really, he's a, good, he's coach. A really good coach. If TCU doesn't turn the ball over, it's going to come down to the dick cutting. Now, you're right I about mean, that. It's going to come all the way down to it. If they turn the ball over, Baylor could make it ugly. Let's move on. Let's talk about Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. Now, we like Justin Fuente. and He almost got that dub last week. I know. I mean, at 17.5-point dogs at Notre Dame. I had a little bit on that. At the, yeah, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. I got so close. Uh, Wake Forest opened a three-point favorite, and it is now minus two. two. I was going to say it's falling And down at a Pinnacle, bit. it is minus one and a half. And people love Virginia Tech right now. Now, I think West, uh, uh, West Virginia, uh, Wake Forest, I think that they've got some things set up here. I, I like their offense. Uh, I think it depends on whether or not Jamie Newman or Sam Hartman ends up playing. Okay, I agree with that. If it is Newman, I think they win the ball game. If it's Hartman, I think they lose the ball game. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with Newman can do a ton with his legs. He is a much more accurate passer. Now the offense still works with Hartman. It just don't work as well. So I'll have to look and see, you know, exactly who's going to end up doing that one, but. Yeah, I, I think I understand Wake Forest has got um they've got Clemson next week. I don't think it matters. Like I think Clemson's probably gonna roll them anyway. Agreed. Um but man, if Virginia Tech gets this win, I mean that that silences a lot of people. I think Fuente's gonna have his boys ready. They've they've completely changed that offense. You wanna talk about improvement. We talked about that before the season started. And we talked about it in the middle of the season, we talked about it last year. College football has no way to reward teams that get better. Yeah. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know the answer to that. But we have to find a way to judge teams from the middle of the season on and not just the early games. Yeah. Like, you got to reward the teams that win all of the games. Okay, I get that. But we don't really have a way to say, man, that team lost a game or two early, but they're a complete – and especially if you look at them. They're a completely different team today than they were when the season started. 2016 USC was the best example. Yeah. Oh, they, hell they went yes. one and three to start the season. Yes. And lost, like, got destroyed by Alabama. Yep. Got beat up by Utah. Got beat by somebody else. I was going to say, it was another uh, was non con, wasn't it? I don't remember. What was the year? Oh, no. They got they got hammered by uh, Stanford. Oh, no. That's Stanford. Right. So they were one and three to start the year. Then they bring in Sam Darnold, and they were world beaters yes. the rest of the season. They hammered Notre Dame. They hammered uh, uh, a Washington team that ended up making the playoff. Yeah. And, and beat them by two touchdowns at their place in Seattle. Like, it ended up winning the Rose Bowl, all that. Like, they, that is a team that you did not want to play in the playoff. Period. 
No, no doubt. And but they had three losses before September was if done. If we ever can get this thing to eight, that's how you reward those teams. Yeah, that's that's where you get them because, because that that gonna, would be a wild you're card. Never going to have six undefeated teams. Like you're never yeah. going to have. Hell, we don't have four. But that's how you get. That's how you get it. Yeah, if you get eight. You get and eight, you find a way to get a team like that absolutely in. Absolutely reward teams that have two early losses and are just world beaters later. Yeah. Because nobody's going to be pissed off that you threw them in that eighth seed. No, I agree. He's going to say, hey, we're going to let you in. And if you beat the best team in the country, if you beat number one, you deserve to be here. If you get your ass whooped, you got run. Now you got that right. You got that right. Let's move on. Missouri at Georgia. Missouri is awful on the road. Could they have figured something out in time for Georgia? This is a... Let down look ahead spot because, yeah. good gracious, Georgia gets the big win in the cocktail party last week. And then next they week they, they got Missouri at home, which is, wait, they've already lost at home once they this year. They got got once. Against a, they got got by a team that Missouri beat by like three touchdowns. I was just about to say, Missouri beat the hell out of South Carolina. Yes, they did. So Georgia has Auburn on the road next week. There you go, two to planes. This is a let down Look ahead spot. And just pay attention to this one. The line is sitting about fifteen right now. Yeah, yeah that's a that's a big number. It's it shouldn't be that big a number. It, a normal week, Georgia should run this team, uh, right? Yeah, you're right. But this is a this is situational football, so we'll we'll see what happens with that. Notre Dame at Duke. Notre Dame eight point favorite. They opened a seven point favorite. It got bet down to like six and a half pretty quick, and then. It has been all Notre Dame money since. I don't think Duke's had the athletes yeah, I don't to be able to match up here. No. Uh, and, and I think what you were saying might be right about Notre Dame is looking to whoop somebody's rear end. Yeah, Notre Dame got, got housed. They got their butt whipped against Michigan. And then they were in the fight of their life at home against West uh, Virginia Tech. I, I, think, I think Brian Kelly... We're going to see pissed off Brian Kelly. I think Ian Book is going to look flawless this week. I think they're going to go down to Duke. I think they're going to whoop their butt. You might be. I think they're looking to beat somebody up. You might be right. I like David Cutcliffe, though. I know. Betting against Cutcliffe the way I did is my nerve. That's my only fear. But at some point in time, man, Cutcliffe's not playing quarterback. No, you're right about that. Quentin Harris is playing defense. Like, he's just. That Duke has been turning the football over a lot this they, year. That's not Cutcliffe football either. No. Like, of course, it wasn't Gary Patterson ball until last year. That's, Sometimes you can't do nothing about the guys you can put out there. You put the best guys out there, they drop the ball, they drop the ball. They don't have the depth to just say, you're benched, I'm putting somebody else in. They yeah. got to play their best guys. Now you got that right. USC at Arizona State. We got a few more here to knock out. USC is favored at Arizona State. I didn't know why this was one of the games we were even talking about. Uh, well, one, I like I mean, Herm we Edwards. Herm. We love Herm. That's yeah. got to be it, right? That's that's why when, I had it in When you told me that game, I was like, this has to be a Herm thing. Yeah, I like Herm. And, there's and, no other reason to talk about this game. Well, and the the seat has warmed up even more so on Clay Helton. At what point uh, we to talk about him At what point does the bottom fall out? And can that Arizona gotta, State... That would mean we to talk about him until he gets fired. This is going to be a shitty couple of weeks, man. Yeah, I mean, you might be right. I, I think I like Arizona Herm. State wins this game. I do too. I do too. I, but I love Herm. I also don't know anything about the Pac-12, so I'm gonna. I like them, but if they lose this game. What does that tell us? South Carolina at home against App State. I absolutely think this is a game App State can win. I think they can win the game too. South Carolina has been bet up to a five point favorite. It opened yeah. three and a half. App State. This is, I mean, money in the bag. Like they they need. They I don't, don't know what they that don't, saying means. That makes it sound no, no, like no, you're right. Sorry, it's not easy. I was about to say, holy I'm shit. Saying, I'm saying this is... That's the most shocking thing you've said all day. It is... They. It doesn't matter what happens in this game. App State's fine, okay. right? Yes, this doesn't change the way we see App right. State. This doesn't change the way that we look at okay. App State. So they're, it's not money in the bag. House it's house money. Yeah, playing with house money. Gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. It's, sometimes sometimes it's we, midnight. Get, we help each other. It's midnight on Tuesday night. Sometimes we just kind of lose it towards the end of this thing. App State, five-point underdog. South Carolina has to have this game no, this if, if they want to get to a bowl game. Yep. Yeah, imagine you go on the road and you beat Georgia and you still might not make a bowl game. 
eh. I'm, I, I'm just saying, App State like looked like trash against Georgia Southern at home last week. At the SET, see, this is the things that people don't talk about in football. Why are some conferences better than others? Why uh, money controls so much of it? And line depth. You, <laughs> and money you, sometimes controls line depth. You don't want to miss bowl games in the SEC when you get potential to get two guys in the playoffs. Yeah. Two guys in the playoffs because that share of that money. You got that right. Goes so much higher. Oh, it absolutely does. And these group of five teams, when they get a chance to get a New Year's Six game, like at App State, I don't think is completely out of this thing yet. I do. I absolutely do. I mean, it, would it shock you? If, the if best Memphis, American team, even with two or three losses, the best two losses, the best American team's going. It's the best conference. I mean, I think you're probably better, right. The, but like, It's better than the ACC. It might be better than the Pac-12. Memphis could beat Cincinnati at the end of the regular season. I, I could see SMU losing again. I can see Navy losing again. I can okay. I can one hundred percent see Boise State losing again, especially if they're playing a third string quarterback. Um, I ain't worried about Boise. State. But what I'm saying is, you have Memphis and Cincinnati who are the two highest ranked group of five teams. The two highest ranked. Correct. But that doesn't mean they're the only ranked. No, agreed. That's what I'm saying. I could see SMU losing again. I could see Navy losing again because I mean Navy's still got to play Notre Dame. I, so, yeah. um, I can see S, uh, SMU, Navy, Boise State. I could see Boise State losing because they, Boise State's not even in this conversation. Boise State is ranked. They're a group of five team. They're ranked above App State right now. Okay. I'm saying App State is not out of this. If they get a win over South Carolina and then they win out because they would have to play Louisiana Lafayette, who has been awesome this year. Agreed. Like they they would have to continue and win out. And then if Memphis beat Cincinnati, Cincinnati does not have a loss in the AAC. I know that. But if Cincy were to win out up until that point and then they lose at the Liberty Bowl and then they have to come back the next week yep. and Cincy beats Memphis in the Liberty Bowl in the AFC Championship game. I think the two-loss Cincinnati team goes. Absolutely, and I don't think it's close. I think you close the door on it. I mean, you might, you might be right. You lost to Ohio State as one of your losses. Holy shit. We're not going to forget that? And then you we go one-on-one one against Memphis. We call you a group of five team. You're not even supposed to belong. One of your only losses to Ohio State? I mean, you got a point. Okay. I, I don't think I it's don't, that easy. I, I think Boise State and App State are out. I think the winner of the American is going. That's my opinion, but I think you the might Americans be right. should be seen differently than we see them nationally. They, they should be a Power Six conference, period. I think I'm good with us having Power Fives. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. that head and shoulders better than the ACC. Yeah, you take, uh, you take UConn out of the AAC and you take Clemson out of the ACC. No, you can't just take our our worst and their best. Let let's let's let them keep Clemson. We'll, we'll bounce UConn and we'll bounce whatever the worst team they got. Syracuse this year they haven't won a conference game. Yeah, you're right. So you take those two teams out. Clemson beats Cincinnati. Congratulations. Every other game after that is at least close. Is at least, and I think the American is favored in almost all of them. You might be right. You might be right. All right, let's close up with these last two. Sorry. As we, we we've gone a little long, but that's all right. Illinois at Michigan State. The reason I have this on here is it is a little bit crazy, and Illinois is getting closer and closer to bowl eligibility. Lovey Smith is doing some crazy stuff at Illinois. This line is 15. Something stinks about this line. I agree. Like, why, why would Illinois, who is on a three-game winning streak, I mean, they are... They're rolling teams right now. They are. Michigan State had, State's, had trouble scoring. Yeah, but the defense really good. I can see. I mean, I think the line's right. That's, I, I'm going to have a little money on Illinois. Okay. And I'm going to have a little on the money line. I'm going to have the money line, but that's just because it's plus 500. Yeah. It, it's big. It's real big. And finally, Louisville at Miami. Why is this six and a half? It's at, because Miami won last week on the national stage because we still put Miami, Florida State on national TV because people who do ratings and stuff don't understand how these games actually work. They care about, literally, they care about who these granddaddies were. Do Florida you think, State's daddy was okay. You bring up Florida State. Scott Satterfield, what he's done at Louisville. Florida State maybe give him a call. You think he won and done bounced? 
Florida State's a better job, right? No. I wouldn't I wouldn't take that Florida State job. At, that, that's a booster problem that I don't think uh, Satterfield wants to deal with. I wouldn't take the Florida State job. Like I think I think that's what it is. I think that he went to Louisville because it is somewhere that he felt he could stay for a while and if he Florida, would run it. If Florida State wanted to feel the flex of their power to still say we belong and we are not a stepping stone anymore. We are not this just just fly by night program that Jimbo and Bobby Bowden built and without them we are nothing because that's what they've been without Jimbo and Bobby. Nothing. Yeah. If they want to really flex, I think they break open the wallet and they do everything they can to pull the golden boy from Nebraska, Scott Frost, and get him back to Florida. <laughs> He's not doing well in Nebraska. Nebraska sucks right now. Let's just call it what it is. They got their they got their golden boy quarterback back, and they still suck. They uh they and stink. I think Scott Frost is really realizing, holy shit, I can't recruit from Nebraska. Yeah, but I fell out of bed at Central Florida and found five star kids everywhere. I think if a guy like Scott Frost took over that, he's strong enough. He has enough reputation and pool in the college community to where he could put the boosters in place where they need to be, and he could get back Florida State's um, winning ways. I think that's the flex. And then you just took a guy from his alma mater, which yeah, tells that's you true. I can take anybody from any school. Nobody that's a good can point. be had. If I was them, that would be the move I would make. But that's one of those things where if you shoot that bullet and you miss, it's gonna make you look bad. How bad does it look? Now you you've got a very valid point there. But that would be that would be my ultimate flex, and I would kind of get an idea of what do I need to be at. Where does this number gotta go? Is this uh is this already a successful year for Louisville? Oh yes. Like I don't I don't I, think it is for Miami yet. Well, no. But they beat they beat the rival in Florida State. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, I Florida State's down. Is, I get is that. Is that their only big win? I mean, Miami still has a shot to go like eight and four here. Is that their only? I'm, they're in the ACC. We know what I think of them. Is that their only big win? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't, I think this, so. didn't this Miami team lose to Georgia Tech? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah. I'm, so I'm done. Probably. Okay. Argument made. You got, you got a valid point. Uh, but, okay. but they're six and a half point favorite against Louisville, who we think is pretty damn good, right? Yeah. That's because people. Who make these lines? Are well, I guess. Hey, let me lines. let me let me go back. They, they watched football last week. Miami was favored against Virginia, and they did get that win. Okay. So Virginia may be a bigger win. The Virginia yeah. probably is their biggest win. So you're right. You're right on that. We were wrong. I was wrong. So Not you. Um, yeah, Miami's just weird to figure out here. I mean, this line may up it may end up being right, but it just seems seems kind of crazy. All right, that's gonna wrap up college football previews for week number eleven. Uh. Roll Tide, Go Tigers, all that wonderful stuff. Of course, make sure you're watching the ball game. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. We've got everything up there. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share the show out. Leave some comments. If you're listening on the podcast, we do appreciate you guys as well. If you would, leave a nice review over at Apple Podcast. A nice five-star written review. Tell us how pretty we look on, te- uh, on, uh, on the TV and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, as, as TJ always talks about us being male models. You don't have to tell me anything positive just don't say so many negative <laughs> that's what the internet's for man that's what they do and it's all right i'm good with it either way because they this, don't say it about you it's all pity pity for my gambling picks nobody feels sorry for you that's uh, i think some do they hadn't been uh nearly as mean this year i'll tell you that all right we appreciate you guys go to tunica tunica mississippi the south's premier sports gambling destination TunicaTravel.com is the website to find out more information about all the wonderful stuff they got going on. They got concerts. They got sports books. They got all kinds of stuff going on. So go and check that thing out. We will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.